Okay, uh, and we are ready to uh, commence meeting. All those, all those in favor? Or can I get a, can we start the meeting? More folks just start the meeting? Yes. Okay, we got a second. All those in favor? Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, passes unanimously. Um, cool, welcome everybody. Uh, we usually do our warm ups, but we, we're probably running uh, past time, so we'll skip that for uh, for now. But I hope everybody is uh, doing well. Um, just a recap of our meeting minutes from last time. Uh, they're online as well. If you'd like to see them, I have them uh, right here on my phone. Just a recap: we did director's report. We tabled uh, budget discussions for this meeting. Uh, and then new business were contributions from new members. Uh, the grants committee uh, discussion is established and uh, events discussion for uh, next year and then we adjourned. Uh, and they're also, um, oh, actually, no, never mind. But they were up on the board. Um, all those in favor of approving the December minutes? Or can I get a motion to accept? I, I want to make a side note. I have it as a, as a point at the end uh, of the agenda today. We should define minimum standards of how our meetings should show. Okay. I, I want to remark our last meeting was not very formal <laughs> as it should be and also the minutes. We should find a way to make sure that this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, cool. So um, uh, going back to that, uh, I need a but motion to accept motion the, the, okay. the, the minutes. Okay. Uh, does anybody second? Um, okay. Cool. So, uh, all those in favor of accepting the meeting, the December meeting minutes, and everyone. Okay. Uh, that uh, passes unanimously, and we are on to our January director's report. I'm going to move this so we can see. Okay. Isn't it shared over Zoom? You should see. Oh, did you share it over Zoom? Yeah, I shared it over Zoom. Oh, sweet. Yeah, good call. Good call. Okay, all the files. Okay, cool. Um, director's report for January. Oh, yeah, it's shared. It's shared on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, screen share. Yes. I'll make co-host, and you can share. Um, Al, when you get a second, can you drop it in the new 2023 folder? The director's report should be in the 2023 folder. Sorry. Mm, okay. In director's report. Okay. Um, we can check it out later. Anyway, yeah, I hope we got that. That's fine. Just with the Okay. Sweet. So um, we're waiting for awaiting installation of items in the JFK community room until then. Uh, scheduled school committee meetings will be staff intensive day, taking up more than a full eight hour day for at least one staff member. I'm just letting you know um, that we'll, we may be preoccupied a little bit with a couple of different things going on. This is one of them. Um, and the school committee contacted us a couple of days ago um, and was thinking we may have four meetings this month um, that we would then need to cover. Um, so that was a little alarming to us just because that represents a pretty significant amount of staff time. Um, that's actually turned out to be just two. Um, so it's going to be manageable either way, but um, and we don't know how long it's going to take to get back to meeting room installed, but until then, those just going to be intensive days. Um, we're beginning finalist interviews for the media coordinator position. Uh, so we'll start interviewing people a couple of days this week and a couple of days next week, and we should have a pretty clear sense of, um, of a hire uh, very shortly. Uh, just as a follow-up, our account, I spoke to our accountants about Liz Walber's laptop. We were talking about passing it on to her and the board tentatively voted that, that was okay, as long as we checked in with our accountants. Our accountants have indicated that that's fine. It's past uh, the five-year depreciation period, so it's actually off of our books completely. There's really practically nothing we need to do in order to pass it. Um, we'll just take it off of inventory. We'll make it known in our inventory document. That's all over the um, we produced first night coverage from five different locations across the city, as well as from roving cell phone cameras on New Year's Eve. Um, the production went very well for the most part. It's a big production. It takes days of preparation, as well as uh, one big, long, 14, 16-hour day on New Year's Eve. 
um, staff work lots of extra hours. The staff took a number of, of days off as well over the holidays as well, between Christmas and New Year's. So, um, so it's pretty chaotic time for us, but we got through it. Um, it, it went smoother than last year's uh, production, which was a little more complicated. Uh, last year, I don't know if you remember, but we produced um, nine different streams or helped produce nine different live streams, four of which we managed. This year, we really just ran one stream and that was made up of a uh, five different simultaneous streams going to the So it was a little bit logistic and simple. Um, I'm noting my numbers off here. It's too boring. Um, we're going to be coming in the next uh, the next five Saturdays, so the rest of January and beginning of February to help collaborate up the Youth Performance Festival. This is a multidisciplinary arts camp that we've been involved with for a number of years. Uh, it's a number of a number of kids um, who come in and basically fill 33 Holly, split them into different rooms. Um, the, the kids who are with us, uh, we don't supervise them. We're basically providing them space and equipment. And there are other people who are sort of leads in the program. And they're leading them through creating short films or animation, a variety of different multidisciplinary pieces. Um, there's kids in other rooms doing other kinds of art as well. There's dance, there's visual art, there's a number of different things. Um, so we'll be in on those on weekends for, for a little while. Um, the first week of January, we, we had uh, a pretty significant problem with channels 15 and 23. So we were in three or four days just to meet with um, Comcast techs. Um, we were on the phone with them where they were, we were meeting them here in order to diagnose the problem. Uh, the channel 15 problem sort of resolved on its own. I wish I had more to say about that, but it's been working and it's fine. Um, we think we had a reset procedure with it that, that didn't fully work and froze it up for a period of time, but it cleared itself out. Uh, the channel 23 encoder had to be completely replaced. Um, this is pretty uncommon. We had another encoder issue though recently, so we've had two in a row. Of these, um, I don't think it's in, indicative of any uh, larger problem. I think it's just coincidence. Uh, but we do have a new encoder on channel 23 and all the channels are back up. How, how does something like this happen? It's it's very rare, especially with these new encoders. They do glitch more than they're supposed to. Um, in other words, they're supposed to be near infallible, and we find that's not true. But um, we haven't we haven't had any. I think we've only had one encoder replacement in the last. Five or so years. Are they covered by Comcast or? Yeah, Comcast is responsible for them. They come in. Um, we just call dispatch and they, they come in and look at it and check it out. Um, our next big thing is to start preparation and moving our operations from 33 Holly to 30 Elm Street. That's going to really happen in the next month. Uh, I think it's going to happen a lot faster than we anticipate. So we're we're moving on it um, as our biggest priority right now. I'm um, set up in that space. Until then, I'm saying no to some things that we maybe otherwise would say yes to. Um, we have a lot of, on our plate and I don't want to overburden us during this time because there's a lot of unknowns in, in how much work is going to be to come over here. And so um, we're going to sort of uh, you know slow down a little in terms of what kind of community productions we're doing in the next couple of months in order to make sure that we, we can transition over here and get set up and be ready for the rest of the year. And last, the last month. Great. Any questions about anything? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Is the um studio space still set up how it was over there? No. Okay. Uh, in other words, well, I'm not sure what you mean by how, how it was, okay. but well, the answer is no in any case. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I, still a lot of things there, but they're they're not configured in a particular. Okay, because I'm just I guess I'm just wondering um how functional the space will be in the transition. Or, oh, you know, know what I mean. The new space, the space here. You mean the well, yeah. Once we transition, it'll be very functional. Okay, so that's why you're saying no because you want to get it all ready. We have to. It's going to take us time to move from there to here and get here set up. Got it. Essentially. Okay. And so that's going to be a bunch of time that we can't be doing production during that time in other spaces. Otherwise, we won't have time to move over that stuff over to here. So all the technical stuff is moved, like the editing computer and so on. Yeah, it's mostly the equipment room. Um, it's mostly the equipment room and uh, and edit facilities that are coming. They will just be in the building. Um, you know, the furniture is going to stay over at 33 High. That's there. Um, we have a bunch of furniture over here. 
and we have some things that we're going to be purchasing and installing. And remind me, it, it's because of renovations. Because the yeah, the building at Thirty Three Hollow is going to be closed down from March through November. Oh, the entire building. There will be spaces inside of. There will be certain spaces that are available in the evening. So the flex space, for instance, at construction hours will end at four or five o'clock. I can't recall which, but and then after that point in the evening, so it's set for seven or eight o'clock shows, there will still be able to be shows inside the flex space. Got it. But we can't be in the building during that time um, while construction is going on. There's insurance liability issues with us being in a construction zone. There's a lot of noise that's going to be happening. It's pre pretty much makes our space unusable. Yeah. Um, and it's not very practical for us to just have a couple hours at night during that period of time. Also, that is only one phase of the construction process. The other, so that's a phase that will last from March until August. And then for the rest of it, the building will be entirely closed. Wow. Okay. So um, we're just we're relocating. It's actually a, it's a great it's a great opportunity in a lot of ways for us because when we moved over there, we intended to run both these spaces at the same time. Yeah. And the pandemic hit us about five months after we moved, and so now we get to build out the space and figure out how to how to really utilize it, activate it, maybe struggle with this to build out some good everything. Awesome. Cool. We didn't uh, confirm next meeting time, but we'll do that at the at the end. Um, thank you for that. Uh, uh, okay. I put the next point there. In our last meeting, we were talking how can we involve the school side a little bit more. I don't want to, uh, what's the, I don't know the English word, uh, surprise anyone. Nola would be the candidate for this. <laughs> Is there any update? Yeah, Um. I actually, if you notice, I put in a section like a little bit later as well. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um I put us in a section a little bit later as well. High school report. Oh. Um I just wrote that but I wrote that in today um because I I checked in with Jeremy. I wasn't sure if I would, should add it in or just bring it up. Um I wanted to I have a few things to talk about and I also wanted to ask what you guys are more interested in hearing about because I don't want to like tell you about something that is like uh oh, whatever like who cares um I guess it's like what are the pieces of information that you would like to know um and so I mean I can just I can do that now if, if you want yeah that was the idea of this point uh but okay. thank you for adding this as well okay cool um so so the here, wait, sorry, I wrote it down one second. Um, so the one of the exciting things that um, a few kids in the transcript are working on right now is um, I assume all of you guys know of like C-SPAN, the, um, uh, I'm blanking on the word, like the broadcast. Um, yeah, channel. Outlet the channel, yeah. Um, and last year, I don't know if you guys know this, we won an award for submitting to it. And this year we have another group of students who are submitting to that again. It's a short documentary competition for students, six minutes long, and they're doing their um, documentary this year about domestic violence, which is um, really interesting. These two kids, very dedicated, which is great. Um, we're also prepping for Emmy Awards. Um, we got a little mix up with... <laughs> Um, Jeremy could tell you all about it with when the due date was, but um, but uh, we're prepping for the Student Emmy Awards and getting all of our submissions ready for that, um, which is very exciting. And um, I also, so those are like the two things that I have because I was working on this list in the last week, but next time for the next meeting, I'll have them, like I'll make this list as the month goes on. Um, as more things come up, but um, I I had an idea as well. Um, because I got an email the other day from Nam of like, be because I was I'm on the crew list of like oh like crew needed, and I was thinking of if we could expand or I don't know if this is like legally how it works with minors helping out with this, but like 
having kids also be put on the email list for the crew because I know a bunch of kids who don't really know Nam very well but who might want to get more into film and might want that outlet a little bit more and like an opportunity to like like it th- this opportunity specifically was about like an actor who wanted to be followed with a camera during the rehearsal process and I was in my head I was like oh my god what if there could be a student with whoever the cameraman is and like that camera person could be helping them or if like we have some kids who actually know cameras really well and could be good at that job and like I was just thinking of how to maybe add kids to the email list or if I can I could forward those emails to kids like I I don't know how that could work but that was just an idea of mine that's awesome yeah that's a perfect idea and is there a general question is there an age limit on the no membership there isn't an age limit on no membership um like so technically if anyone signs up that's the the straightforward way yeah I could also, if it's a school address, I don't know if it makes sense to vet it. You could vet it through Jeremy or through an email address through the school that reposts it to something as well. There's other ways of firewalling it if there's any concern about the firewalls. Yeah, yeah. I think there's two things going on. There's there's one as the organization and one as the school. Yeah. The school has certain things where if, for instance, we were having um, during the day, if we scheduled a... A, uh, a band to come in and we were having the students have that band and, and record that band for instance it would be during curriculum so certain district procedures and protocols are there and so we would need for instance to have everybody within that space and within that because even though it's our space it's a student right. it's a school function so we need to have everybody choreographed and stuff like that if it was also um school thing that was not during school hours and they were all uh, Northampton Open Media members and it was not a school thing, then it would be under different uh, different protocol and procedure. I think you have to have Corey people who are supervising at all times. I don't know if everyone needs to uh, For the, the, the volunteers. For they, people who are volunteering, anyone yeah, who's supervising yeah. the students needs to be True, Corey. true, true. Yeah, I got that a little bit mixed up right there. Yeah. Because you can have speakers, for instance, that come into the school. Yeah. 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 Also, I don't know if you said this, Al, but like in terms of having like firewall, like, I mean, oh, wait, actually, maybe this isn't what you were talking about. But like on my school email, I got that email from NOM. So it is definitely accessible. Like you can still access students or, or like reach out to them. But I don't know if that was the question. <laughs> My understanding, the simplest way is if people are interested, they should sign up for a no membership, which is free, and then you're basically mm-hmm. like then then you get the information. The crew call list is a little different. We we're on a separate list that is the crew call list. That is the oh, okay. on a crew call list. Um, you have to you have to. We can come so, up though with the, I think it there makes a lot of sense to have a proactive process to reaching out to students who want to be on that list. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm-hmm. But that's, uh, a, that's a, how should we follow up on that? Yeah. What are next steps? Maybe that we could draft something to students asking them if they have interest. You know, maybe it's a pitch for non-membership as well. Yeah. And it's asking if there there's a desire for people who want to be on this list as part of it. We used to have a thing where we would basically kind of like an ambassador day where uh where Nod would come in, Al would talk, we would talk about like the, the, the things that we have, because it's not always just to kind of clarify to the kids, like what, how we get gear and what their purpose and aim is and mission statement and stuff. And then we would actually sign up, sign up students that were interested as members. Why, why did we stop having that day? Uh, COVID. And oh. That was kind of like the breaker for a lot of things. But uh, yeah, we, we probably did that in like 2019, 20. Not 2020, but uh, that's a good fit. Like, if you move in here and you're here full time anyway, yeah. then it's easy to arrange. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, I think I, for next steps, I would say just uh, you know, once you're in, we have a kind of like and we could have like a little open house type thing yeah. after you you know yeah. established and everything yeah. because the students are really curious yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh yeah, kids like are very excited about that space and I think there's definitely ways we could make it accessible to them and have sort of like a mentor process or something of the sorts. 
exciting. Love that. Do we need an action for this to follow up, or is it too? I would say what? my schedule of time for um for our for our students. I mean, I don't know what the demands from South Hadley would be, but you could probably even outreach to PVPA and stuff be because awesome. that's it's a it's a charter school, but there's certain students from this community that are also in it and stuff like for that. Sure. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah, PVPA would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We do want to reach out to Smith Oakley. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where is he? Uh, so yeah, action I would be once once uh we're established back over here doing a day that we could do that at open house. When would this be? If, if everything works out, March, April. I mean, as soon as would be convenient. Yeah, I mean, I mean the other part is before. Also. Yeah, we could do it before. What I would say is that definitely March. Uh, we. Would... I think what might be good it would be a um, like come in, talk about stuff, and then it says, "Hey, you want to come check out our space? Follow us, and then you give a tour of the Nam area." And that would be March. That would be late March, early April. Okay. Right, I would say late March. If we wanted to cast a wider net, we are a few weeks away from the end of the semester. Okay. So we would do it. Twice, one at the end of the semester for the the classes that I have now, so that's probably about ninety students. And when is that? And the end of the semester is technically January thirtieth, but whenever so you know, January twenty students in there exactly, and then just do the tour with the other group once we're in. And then you know, a few weeks later, a couple weeks later, we could do it again and get a different yeah ninety kids, and that's one hundred eighty sure. kids, and that that casts like a pretty big net. Sure. Hmm. And we have this time called um, flex period too. I mean, you could come in during. During. I wouldn't. I wouldn't come in during flex period. No one's really in here. Um, no offense, Jeremy. Too as well for those kids. For those kids I, yeah. Yeah, and I have like community is so much smaller that I have like a very similar students for most semesters, so I can be. I'll I'll plug in in the second semester. I think. Cool. Um, cool. I, I wrote us notes to follow up on that. So. Cool. Thank you. Anything else on your list? Oh, um, that was all I had right now since I was just working on that this week. Um, but next month we'll probably have a longer list because I'll be doing it throughout the month. Perfect. Yeah. We keep us busy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> are we budgeting? What is the next point? Oh, Just election. Of... A lecture of officers. <laughs> oh my God, it's the beginning of the year again. Yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, I believe it should be pretty straightforward. Is there a, any one of the current officers who wants to change? So can we get a list of what we have so far? We have uh, Alex as president. Um, Vice President? Yeah. yeah. Um, your secretary right clerk. now? Clerk. Clerk. Technically, clerk. Yeah. Yeah, secretary. And, and then, then treasurer. Yeah. Your treasurer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to be uh, uh, vice president? I I mean, I, yeah, you, yeah, I love that you tried to dish it off and I'm trying to I'm like, this summer and someone will have to take over for me. Okay. Um, we like our roles. Mm. Yeah. Then, then, then I would move a motion to confirm the officers as they were last year. Oh, good. That we really yeah, like uh, <laughs> You probably want to be the one that second this so over. Tim. Uh, uh, oh, or make a motion. Nola, do you want to be? Oh yeah, yeah, or or Nola. Oh no, I'm I'm good. I'm I mean I'm gonna be in college. I think we decided that I'm not gonna be here next, like for the full year even. So sorry, guys. <laughs> but you, but, you uh, but there's still half a year left. <laughs> yeah. Do a lot of work. <laughs> Okay, but then the motion is to confirm the officers that yes. were well uh, last year. Motion to to uh, re-elect the officers as 
Uh, they have been already established. I'll second. Um, uh, great. Can I just, before we, uh, what a, uh, Oh my God! What's his name? The the, the... Alex. Yeah. He, he confirmed in an email that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We, ch wow. we checked in with him. An email we checked in. I'm still. <laughs> that's still. <laughs> one of email. The... <laughs> he said he still could decline, but I have yeah. to him specifically. Yeah. This is so dangerous. You should never miss the meeting where they assign. You'll show up the next time, and you'll be like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but then we have a vote. Uh, everyone in favor? Aye. Wait, who seconded? Can you second it? Yes. Okay. Nola, you're all in favor? Yeah, Nola, you got to vote. There you go. Yes. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I put thumbs up. You, you missed the chance of becoming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if someone was really power hungry, they could split in to out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now you're the vice president. Yeah. <laughs> and treasure. <laughs> uh, okay, sweet. Um, so that um concludes the election of officers. We already did the high school report. Uh, and so we're looking at the approval of production grants. Uh, is that something that um, that the grants committee met over, or is this just something that we're kind of looking at and discussing the, together? Or? Yeah, we had a meeting. Yeah, we had, we okay, cool. long Sweet. discussion, and it's basically we want we were hoping for an approval of the outcome. Cool. But, right. So, so the grant committee met and went through its scoring applications and met and reviewed them. Um, and uh, he's sort of in a spot where he would like to recommend to the board that the board. Okay, us going two thousand dollars over the budget of ten thousand dollars this year for grants. Um, we're we're sort of at a space where it's hard to know where the next cut would take place. Uh, it would either represent um, removing one of the grants uh, that we would like to to move forward, and or um, reducing some of the other grants to a point where we're not sure if we'll impact the quality of uh, of the product. I'm going to share this with you on Zoom as well. I assume crashed out over there. Um, what what you're seeing here is, um, and please jump in, Florian or Tim, who are on the who are on that grants committee, um, to to sort of make things any clearer. Um, what, what I have here is just a just a snapshot of what's happened in, in the history of the grant. It's pretty easy thing actually to put together. Um, and you'll see the total of applicants for each year, yeah. the number of grants. Yeah. That's the first thing that it stuck out. Uh, the number that finished, the 54, is that the first thing that stuck out? Yeah. yeah. Well, the total applicants was the first thing that stuck out to me. Um, dollars spent and allocated, meaning um, some grants weren't finished, so the, the allocations were not completed. And then the average award in those typical years, and at the bottom, you'll see um, some cumulative and average stacked over the lifetime of the grants. Um, so, you know, we've given over, we've given, once we've given more money than we're looking to give this year, um, that was two years ago in 2020. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure how to talk about trends here. We've had some, obviously in the beginning, there was, there was a real large number of applicants to the program that tapered off a little bit. Um, this is a, on the higher side of the number of applicants we've had in the historical year. Um, We've always had a cap of $2,000 on grants, so we haven't changed that limit over the lifetime of them. Uh, the average grant for this year would be about fifty, would be $1,500 exactly. That's a little extra on the lower side than we've given in the past few years. Um, and then you reflected with COVID. Um, but that's the situation. Um, yeah. So the, so the 2000 is for a new project without giving more money to Fewer people. We gave ten thousand dollars out, or we budgeted for ten thousand dollars, and we're looking to give out twelve thousand dollars to eight grants. We've never given out eight grants before. Um, the most we've ever given out, given out is seven, um, and the average of those eight grants is fifteen thousand. It's fifteen hundred dollars. And I think a little bit of background in the conversation, like we had four. Uh, no, what is it? Eight. eight. We have uh, five film projects. Four film projects. Four film projects. Oh, five film projects. You're right. One virtual reality, 
one photo project, one podcast, that's yeah. the, the, the project. And so we tried to get a diversity and then we look through the application. Can you repeat that? I think that's weird to say. What was it? One VR? One VR project, one uh, podcast, and one photo project within the community. Uh, one, sorry, one. Photo. Oh, wait, can we do an animation also? There's also, in the in the films, there's one in, there's an animation right. project, at least one animation project. Right, there was one animation. And I think it was one. And there's there's the fictional stuff, and I don't know if there's documentary. But there's other documentary projects and some of the other stuff. But, and so, like that's where we kind of ended up. We we were aiming for the ten thousand, but then we thought with the diversity, it might it, we would have to cut. We felt we would have to cut one of the more diverse projects, right. which we kind of didn't want to. Um, uh, so first question is, can you detail the process of how we give the money out? So is it's is it like first half up front, yes. second half upon completion? It's first half up front, twenty five percent at a midpoint. Okay. So what we we stay in contact with recipients, <clears throat> and um, when they feel as if they have completed some sort of substantial progress towards the end product, we just have a conversation with them. They usually will show us something, um, you know, depending on the nature of the project, that could mean different things. And then once it's completed, give the last twenty five percent. There are also um, occasions in which we've shifted that schedule for different kinds of reasons. Like people need some, well, like maybe they need more money up front or something. Just kind of, rarely we've had a conversation. The second question I have is, is there a limit as to when we, there, there needs, so for instance, I'm seeing uh, five people were given grants in 2017, but three finished. Is there a kind of cutoff date for them to finish that project or? Well, I don't know, that's an interesting question. Yeah. If someone who had had a grant in 2015 finished the project eight years later, <laughs> I would be inclined to give them the money, but uh, I don't think I would, yeah. I don't know if we're obligated to at that point. Yeah. I, and that's an interesting, I don't think the answer to that question. But yeah, but I still have hope, I will say, for the 2020, even in 2021 projects. We've had people finish two calendar years later. That's happened. And, and we'll. Well, so I mean, it's an interesting question to think about, you know, money kind of quote unquote money saved when we're thinking about this two thousand dollars. Because I mean, if you look at twenty eighteen, yeah. you know, that's that's uh, over twenty or yeah. it's, it's over two thousand dollars that we saved in the long run over the scope of all, of all the grants. And so, does it kind of even itself out from the allocations based off dollars spent? But how far do we? I would say, you know, even up to 2014, if you if you found a way to finish your project and everything like that, be rewarded. Um, but realistically speaking, who's going to do those? Um, that's kind of just a justification, but philosophical justification for the two, for giving 2,000 more this year. Absolutely. I also just want to say, as a 2015 recipient, it like I don't know, it made a huge difference in my life. So I think the more people we can award it to, the better. $2,000 is a lot for an independent filmmaker, especially for an emerging independent filmmaker. I remember how good it felt to even just get the $1,000 up front right away. It was awesome. So I am 100% for it. As a, from the treasurer perspective, this is such a minute position in our overall budget so it doesn't matter when we pay the two thousand dollars if it's like so it, it has no impact on our bottom yeah. uh so that's really not a problem i think what in our conversation uh we had uh in that meeting is uh it's w what is the intention of the grant that this is a little bit more like that, it, that it's clear that everyone is on the same page uh like one of the conversation was, uh, do we want to have it, give it more towards established people? Do we want to give it towards projects which go into the community? Do we want to give it in, like, is it, is it a project which is m more chance to be finished or not? And how, how much we consider those things and, uh, and to um, balance this a little bit out. And I, I believe we found a good uh, compromise. I don't know if, if there's any need uh, to look at the individual projects. I think that might take a little bit too long. Um, 
uh, I think one thing which uh, Elle mentioned is there was a thought uh, that we should get uh, recipients of the grants to get into a committee uh, to do this for the, 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 the following year that they are part of the election process. Mm -hmm. uh, right. That would be one way to move it a little, to make it a little bit more self-sufficient that would go in the direction of having um, outside of the board people be involved in activities of, of norm, uh, it would create a little bit this effect in the community, which I think would be great and it would also help on the on the staffing side. Uh, it, it takes some work to to get this together and if there's external people who work it's okay. Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's not a unsubstantial amount of going this time. And then I think you back off that I just wanted to say that. Um we, you know, we we really had to work to get it down that low. It's like, because we did, you know, our feeling like on, on certain projects, we didn't want to water certain projects down. Mm -hmm. We wanted to give them their best foot, you know, forward as far as, you know, giving them the resources that they needed to create their vision and whatever. So, um, you know, we was going back and we was, you know, even to a point like, like uh, you mentioned that we didn't really want to cut a project, but, you know, um, you know, so that's how we got to the twelve thousand um, number, or whatever. But um, yeah, so um, you know, I think we did the best we could in this situation for what we was given. Yeah, yeah. this is awesome. Oh. And thank you for putting this together. This I is a great know. Question. No, yeah. no. Did you have a comment? Oh, I was just gonna say I agree with what everyone else is saying. Great. Cool. And I'm trying to say. That the audit, personally, I think it's great that the odds are of getting grants are kind of less competitive from the beginning, <laughs> or are get you know, or we're spreading the wealth more. So I think that um, I, I'm all for it. Should we vote? Uh, one comment regarding Nola. There's also uh, how many people? Are, I think there's two recipients were youth. Use no, there's one still in high school. No, there's definitely one youth grant and one identified bypass grant. Like that was, that was also interesting. That, that the range of people who applied was really. It might be two. There, yeah. Wait, so there's a youth who applied for the grant or a youth who got the grant? Exactly, who will be getting the grant? Oh. I know that on on our side, I advertised it to all my classes and the film club as well. So, oh wow, yeah. I wonder who. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> it was great. I mean, I was talking with Dave about this like shortly before the board meeting. Just commenting on how many people we touched. So, awesome. on. so yeah. Um, I mean, one last thing. I don't know if it's it, it would. I don't think it would be budgeted in here, but it might be some sort of line item for under events or something, but uh, a way to allocate some resources for for uh, showing off the work and, you know, maybe X amount to reserve the Academy of Music or to have certain advertisements for the parlor room or something like that. Um, because I know that sometimes the, the grants can be, we've, we've done like really good jobs at like the, the open house at Holly street. I, re I remember that was, that was awesome. Um, but just getting that out there and getting the message that we do this and, and showing off the work. We have, and we have a history of that, but we need to be very conscious about it. Yeah. And also, um, so spreading it through social media would be important. Does does Northampton Open Media have a Instagram page? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Um. Anything that we need to vote on here yeah. for approval? Yeah, oh, the the the. the we want to vote on it because we there's no formal procedure that's also on our list. Uh, if we go over budget and the minor item. When does the board need to vote and change it? But to make it fully official, we wanted to vote. Okay. That. Then so I'll okay. make a motion to increase the grants budget by two thousand dollars to a total sum of twelve thousand dollars. And I second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye.
Motion yeah. passes unanimously. Sweet. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. Can That's I awesome. get, I just when you say that just for this year? Or for this year. No. And then, yep. So for this year, and then yeah. it's kind of on a year by year basis. But I hope we break that. I hope we break it for next year, too. We're almost back to pre-pandemic stuff, so that's good. Sweet. Uh, okay, so the approval of production grants and now uh, budgets. I think that we also have a, we could share there. Okay, so there's uh, two parts to this budget process. One is showing you. Yeah, you Did just you have to click the button. Okay. No. Okay. Okay, so um, you're seeing this is a little tough to see inside of this. Uh... You make it one bit smaller. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, so what you're seeing here is just a, this is the final reconciled 2022 financials. Um, just to show this to you before we talk about the budget. Um, in case you have any questions. Uh, so what you're seeing, the new numbers here are in, are in quarter four, B4, this column here. Sorry, I have to correct you. It's preliminary final. That's, that's uh, things missing, like the grants are not in there yet. Well, that's true. It is a preliminary final. That's right. <laughs> um, the grants are not. Specifically, the grants are not in there. We could actually... I don't know if there's any difference when the accountants look over this. That's true, too. There, there, there might be some differences, but that's... And this is public, like I can link to it in the minutes. I forget. I would say so. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's any issue. We've never, we've never hidden our financials. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. Uh, so Q four. These are these are preliminary Q four uh, reporting. Um, grants is not in here, um, and also summarized into the full year. You see the percentage of um, what was budgeted uh, to the right, um, in addition to the actuals in the total column. Okay, so that's the the increase versus budget. Is it coming from? Was there a shift on the Comcast fees from last year to this year? Yeah, uh, that's my that's my. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't know where those shifts happen, like between residential and commercial services, for instance. I'm not sure where where the money's coming from, but subscriber numbers did not go up, but our dollars did. Our dollars have not gone up for a very long time. There's another sheet I could probably take the board through at some point in the future that talks about that is about historic historic subscriber numbers and some other things. But but it's not a shift but, because something is missing last year. No, it's really just it's the, really the numbers. Good. Good. Yes, we got more money this year. Our our checks of Comcast went up a little bit. Historically, just for framing, they always went up for a long time, and then they flattened out, which is the same as going down, right? This inflation, um, and so uh, I think Comcast raised prices by a significant amount. Let me guess what happened? Um, and that outpaced, <laughs> yeah, and that outpaced uh, the loss in subscribers. We've been losing about seven or eight percent of subscribers in the year. So, yeah. And there's there's still no um connection at all to streaming or like no. the internet. Yeah, the internet yeah. like yeah. this is purely it's purely television money. Um, so that that four hundred and thirty eight thousand dollars you're seeing. The other part of it, and I don't Al can probably speak to this more, the "Quote unquote Netflix Netflix taxes and things don't necessarily go to peg. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've been they've been trying to get creative with those types of taxes, but it's not necessarily going towards public access. Yeah, there's some people. Yeah, that's a I, that, that's a big topic. Exactly. I'm I'm interested in that, but yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, there was a there was a bump in our in in, in our Comcast checks. We <laughs> did a little bit better in terms of the production services that we have been doing. Our Patreon continues to increase uh, slowly, um, but it is doing so. 
um, in terms of other budget, budget items. Um, um, Grant's done here. I don't know if there's any questions specifically about any of these. these, 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 these um, but we're in the black this year by quite a bit. Um, I should note that these. Oh, this, this is not in here. One of the positions uh, where we underperformed is personal development, where basically nothing was spent. And we can talk about that. Professional yeah. development. Professional, yeah. Yeah, professional. Oh, professional development. Yeah. Okay, let's talk this on a budget, but okay. uh, hence the numbers are. And right now it's just Alan. Yep. Okay, so here's a proposed post twenty twenty three budget. Um, starting with agent at the top. Um, this is a streamlined budget um, as we have been, as Corey and I, and I have been uh, presenting to the board um, in a less detailed, more summarized fashion. Um, so I budgeted a little bit more time past me. I'm, I'm, I'm just consistently a little bit shy about, um, about under projecting those fees because we just don't know how much work that is going to happen inside the community. And so I've got that at about four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. A minor increase in Patreon support, um, uh, a slightly elevated budget in program income than we had last year, but also understanding the program fluctuates a lot year to year as you can see in the last three years. It's been going up over the last years, but I'm not sure that that's a, I don't think that's a trend that we've been actively uh, participating in. It's, um, so, um, it's low enough amounts of money that it's hard to say that that's. I think my comments on, on the income side yeah. would be obviously this is all in line with, with the with the story we are seeing. I think as a board we should think and based on the on our, our workshop. Is there any other like income side? Is this a priority of this year that we look at the other income with this budget? We don't we continue the story and wait hopefully that the contract works out and hopefully that the internet comes and it's financed uh, for a long time. But that's a risk we are, we are running with, with continuing here. Uh, we don't substitute the income. Just as a side note, in another year, we're gonna start the, maybe start the process with the city of renegotiating the contract with the clients. That's one question. Um, this is the income side. Um, the highlights of Mary's here. There's a there's a significant increase in contract services that represents the audit that we're going to start that we're going to certainly perform this year and perhaps in future years as well. Um, so you see, there's a that's about ten thousand dollars of that budget. Um, facilities and equipment. Um, you'll see it's a it's a this number of six thousand five hundred dollars is a lot a lot less has happened in the past year. What's not in here is that um, it's, it's a depreciation number. It's not inside of here, so we depreciate about forty thousand dollars. Typical depreciation budget number that we put in at the end of the year. The accountants determine that, um, so I don't have it in this budget. So you should see that as possibly forty six thousand dollars more if we operationalize our depreciation. Does that make sense? Uh, then we have um, this this thirty three Holly Street line item. Um, I have budgeted twenty one thousand dollars. Uh, there's there's a, there's there's two things going on there. One is there are two things that make up that budget. One is a line item that is a combination of rent, and lower off cam costs, common area maintenance costs um, that building uh, lessees share inside of Thirty Three Holly Street. Um, and then the second part is just cleaning services that we contract out for the space. So uh, there's a, an elimination of those cleaning services for March and November is in that budget. The rent and cam is still in there. Right? Those should drop down by a significant amount. I don't know what that number is yet. We're still having that negotiation with the Arts Trust currently. We're trying to determine what those cam costs are. I think it will be cut. I, you know, my guess is it will be more than cut by half at the end of the day. But I don't have a number for you. 
as to what that might mean. And I don't want to put that at zero. Um, and also just be aware that that's just going to be a lower number for next year. The year after that number will go back up. So it's not like you can count out every term. Um, so after that is, is um, operational money. Um, it's broken down underneath here. Um, some of the maybe outline things here in terms of supplies, you'll see that the budget number is roughly double what we have historically. Um, that's because the way I budget supplies historically, if I take a look at individual items over the last three years, so that could be something like lighting supplies. And I look at how much we spent on lighting supplies over the last three years, and I took the highest, I took the highest number, and that's what I use to predict my next budget. So those high numbers are always higher than there's always one number that's that you know we're taking a worst case scenario as if our most expensive year happened every year, and that's why that number looks like eighty hundred dollars. The reason I do that is just I don't want to be surprised um, in case we do need something or I have some money inside those funds to do that. So that's a little bit of a there's definitely cushion built into that naturally. I can budget that a different way if you if you'd like. That's totally fine, but that's just an explanation of how I arrive at that number. Uh, to give a little bit of background, also the ideas behind it, there's no clear procedure of what line item deviations and needs to have approval for. Uh, that's why we try to comp compress it a little bit that we can say on the on the major line if there's a major change, with, which is not yet defined. Uh, we need to approve it if something changes during the year. But books and references, I don't know, if, if it goes on a shopping spree for Personal, uh, for professional education for books. Yeah, it's not an important line item with $300. Um, utilities is a little bit lower. Mostly that represents um, uh, us backing off or pausing our internet service at 33 Holly Street, which is a really expensive service. Uh, we won't have that during the year, so that's why that number is a lot lower this year than it was last year. Um, Hardware and software is, is I think it, it's an elevated number because I'm looking at the 2021 number essentially um, when I'm budgeting for that. Um, promotions is in line with past year budgets. We just didn't, we haven't spent it all in recent years. Um, these pandemic years, we didn't do a lot of promotion um, as we did in, pre in previous years. Promotion like marketing? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and also understand our promotion budget has other stuff inside of it because we do so much event marketing. So when we write the Academy of Music to show crowds for cinema, that's our promotion. Okay. When we submit awards to the live stream community media, that is about our promotion budget. Because those are the things that do market our, our organization. Um, you know, it's not like taking that out of the newspaper, but it's still a market. Okay. Um, slight increases in insurance. The personal, the personal, not personal recruitment, <laughs> personnel recruitment. Oh, I'm not personally recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> um, the personnel recruitment, and I, I just, uh, we always carry some money in there. Just give everyone someone's going to leave, right? So you'll see who's left. That's not everything, and we spend some money there. Um, professional memberships are sort of like things like our memberships in line with the media, for example. Director's discretionary uh, is in line with previous years, same with scholarship. Um, there was a question I think for you had this when you did this, and I think it's called the NHS graduation donation. That's a mislabeled, it's the NHS tech project. So this is money we get to the to fund the program in these rooms. The okay. the, 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 it's the, like batteries. And, yeah, okay. okay. It's that kind of production supplies. Okay. Um, so we'd like to, I'd like to increase that. Um, our goal is, I know we talked about this and we didn't do it this, this semester, but I, my goal is still to, to find a way to get the students involved in managing that money directly. So this expands, you know, there's, there's like a, there's a, there's a business that's happening here or an organization that's happening here and, and having the schools have a, the students have agency in our process. And that's a conversation Nola and I had as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nola, you have to ask why it's only four thousand eight hundred dollars. Grants for production. I have a ten thousand dollars again this year. Um, and here's one. I'm born. was talking about professional development. So Actually, we approved that, so you can bump it to twelve. Right? 
Uh, 12 is, well, this is next year, by the way. Oh, next year. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, the, so the, the 12 we approved was reported in 22. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so, professional development. This is a conversation that's happened more than once in the history of this organization about, about uh, employees. About 20,000 percent. Out the door. I'll say this. We, we've done much, we've done better in pre pandemic years. I hate that, like, that keeps coming up as an excuse for everything, but, um, you know, people were mostly sitting at home during those years and there wasn't a lot of professional development going on. We've always really pushed staff to try to, to try to identify things to do. Um, and I will redouble efforts in that regard. The $9,000 represents $3,000 3, per employee. So that employee can take classes with, so that employee can, you know, can sort of, you know, get any kind of instruction or development uh, around. Honestly, I think a lot of what, what happens with staff is they're just like, I don't know what I want to do for professional development. I have a hard time identifying it. I don't think that's unique to this organization either. I think a lot of people have time, have problems getting their professional development money spent. And that's really, you know, I have to take that upon myself to be even more insistent that that happens. Uh, more of these, perhaps that I can create those situations myself with staff I think to send people on things. I, I think it goes with it. Uh, you don't have a problem that people want to stay with no. Like that's not like that's true. Sometimes if people want to develop like you there's a lot of improvement of people over the years and what they learn and so on. So it's not it's not in, it doesn't mean uh, offer intrinsic value to people to stay and no. There's the and there's time within their day itself, I think, for people yeah. to do research and learn things on their own. And it's just, yeah. it's just baked into the job itself. Yeah. The other thing I would say about it is, this is also related to travel and convention, which is a later line item. We used to go to a lot more uh, things and get to NAB every year. Yeah. Or we send at least one person to NAB every year. And at NAB, there's lots of professional development options for people. We sent everyone at some point through a drone flying school in Las Vegas. Um, so, like, we've done that in the past. It's easier when people are going to things like that to find those kind of opportunities for folks. Uh, yeah. But the, but I think it's important to keep the money there, for sure, and I'd like to really try to spend it. So, by any chance, do, um, yeah. do you send any of the board members to drone what? flying school? <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just so we know if you're doing, yeah. you know, as an audit, yeah. <laughs> right, right. All right, I can teach you how to fly. Oh, I have. You know, I, I got one right over there. Let's take your skin. Uh, we have sent we have sent board members to conferences, and this year the Alliance for Community Media Conference in New York City, which is pretty close. So um, that's a conversation the board can have related to that. So well, yeah, that's last year this was very short notice. Maybe we can plan this ahead. It's in June of this year. I have dates already in New York City and the book hotels are recently staffed. So we should put that on maybe next month's agenda. Uh, cool. cool. It's also it's really fun and yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. also, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Also, some students have um, been talking because we went to the Alliance for Community Media Conference, Northeast Conference last year. So some kids are interested in going again this year. Yeah, so I don't know where that is yet this year, but uh, that would be awesome. And and Northampton students really represented amazing. Yeah, they they, they did it. two different uh, panels, three three yeah. panels. Believe Nola was on at least two, but man, I don't know if she. <laughs> so uh, and then travel and meetings. Um, that's conferences and travel. Um, that's pretty historically low for our travel budget, for our conference budgets, but. Oh, you know, yeah. The HDMI side again. Could be my computer. Oh, you say it's a cable. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. crappy cable. You gotta buy it. Uh, yeah. The one brand I found is really So um, that's pretty historically low for conferences and travel. Um, as you see, we haven't spent much in the past years. Again, COVID. Um, well, all three past years we're looking at were COVID. Pretty much. I mean, oh, this last year has been less COVID than the other two. That's, I mean, I, I shouldn't be surprised at all, but it's 2021 20, right here. I know. Wow. Yeah. That's the numbers crazy. changed a lot, 19 and previously. It looked yeah. quite a bit different. At one point, we were spending almost 20,000 on travel. Yeah. I mean, NAB, so we'll send someone to, the goal is to send someone to NAB, probably send Dave to NAB because no one's been in a while. 
Um, and and then the ACN topics in New York, and then I'll probably eat that up. Uh, one remark here on my side. Yeah. Uh, it goes rather towards the board. Is there any, and I don't know how sensitive the topic is, is there any money we need to reserve for activity around the board that we make the board membership more attractive? Nora already said she might, she's phasing out. I don't know what your plan is. It probably will phase out after my term. Uh, I, or I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen <laughs> in May? But, but. Jeremy could yeah. phase out in, at the end of this term, whatever that is. That's just yeah. Term. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by that. And uh, it, I mean two things. Like, we, this is a structured topic. We need to find new people. How do we get this? Can we make board membership more attractive if there, if for example, if there's education funds linked to a board membership, something like that? Um, I could see board retreat stuff, but that would be in travel and meetings, I'm guessing. But yeah, it's hard to incentivize certain things like that. It feels a little bit too much of a we always just do a staff fund day. We haven't done that in a while, but I would like to. But you're not talking about these things. You're talking about like an education. I, I I'm not talking about anything specific. I yeah. like yeah. we had a hard a, a challenge finding someone. Uh, Tim, you 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 got the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I was the <laughs> first one you got? <laughs> but is is there? A way you're the to... only one of the <laughs> You're the top. You're the header. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way if we have some funding that I, I don't know to make it more attractive to make it more interesting and it can go both ways obviously it's it's a risky way once you start paying people and there are certain limitations we have to follow I don't know I, like I think we should we have to be more proactive about this and do we need money for that in the budget we also have enough line items where we can put this yeah. in it's, it will not be Hundreds of thousands of dollars, anyway. So it's. I mean, we can't compensate directors directly. That really, yeah, yeah, that's not. Um, yeah. Would I always say it would be the team in this room? Yes. <laughs> um. That's it. Let's have. Let's uh, come back to this session. I, that's great. Yeah. It would be good to have in the in in the, in the notes that we think about this. Yeah. Package. But yeah. It's also um so and I, I we do need an executive session to discuss some of the personnel issues related to the budget um and the questions so the, the board would have to go into executive session for that but that's the end of this description if there's any questions up to that point you know, that's... wait up to which point up to the point before we talk about that before we talk about personnel yeah okay okay um no I think that I think that we're pretty good um anybody else. I feel good. Um, I think the the supplies. I don't know if we'll hit that necessarily, but I have no problem with it being that 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 high because it's not going to necessarily. And I like the planning of you know the highest year that we've had. That's that's good practice. Um, good. Uh, yeah. anybody else? Yeah, we can talk about in an executive session more about things. Right. Yeah, well, I thought we were going to start talking about personnel. This you know? is more just like clarifying questions, right? These are clarifying questions to me that do not have to do with personnel and compensation. Yeah. Yeah. Once mm -hmm. you go into the executive. Um, right. Yes, great. So good. Yeah, uh, maybe my summarizing comment this is again a conservative budget. Budget discipline is not a, I don't think it's a problem in the organization. I think that we don't change anything structurally what we want to do on the income side I, that's the major remark i would have from the the treasury side yeah. uh, but other than this yeah. cool all right so uh i think oh, that is one, one thing is with the additional just to be aware there's a, a plus twenty thousand at the moment uh and we have been traditionally under under budget uh with this 30 uh, 40 thousand coming in from uh from the depreciation depreciation we are we have a negative amount there yeah wait wait wait, wait. The, the, the net result we are missing forty thousand dollars in the in the in the overall 
Okay. Okay. Oh, because of the approved thing. Okay. Yeah, it's good to be aware of that. Okay. I mean, I would say typically we come in under budget anyway, so there's it probably be more than thirteen thousand without the depreciation at the end of the year historically. Yep. Yeah. The depreciation is also I don't know it's it's a question of what your comfort level is whether we should be budgeting inside of operations for that or not. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's a question that we can explain. Yeah. Right. Uh, to be consistent, it should be. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it should be reflected. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we are budgeting. Yeah. Yes. So we would have a negative net result. Yeah. We expect it to be positive because it's budgeted on the high side. Yeah. Um. So it should be. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Okay. Um, so now we're going to uh, discuss uh, personnel budgetary matters, and I would entertain a motion to uh, enter executive session. Second. Oh, wait, you're not going to go over anything with us? That's, that's that's cool. Cool. I'm going to be in the first part of it, actually. Oh, and you're allowed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, He's okay. just not when we're making oh, our decisions. Now I'm, just, now I'm not. No notes and no recording. So oh. You do take notes. You do take but notes, but they don't show up in the executive session. Yes, yeah. they're not public notes. Oh. They go into like a. Okay. Um, so there was, um, um, I made a motion to enter executive uh, session. Second. Uh, all those in favor of entering executive session. Okay. Uh, aye. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to now, uh, could you stop your share? Um, okay. Let me just... Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll open the bathroom too, if you need to. Um, okay. I'm going to keep the recording going, but I'm going to stop video. I can actually, I won't do that. I'll, I'm going to. Okay. So we have exited executive session. We are returning to a uh, normal session. Uh, and I don't know if we were supposed to have a vote to uh, exit executive session, but. It wasn't. <laughs> Everyone voted. For Everyone it. voted. We, we had <laughs> exit, exit, uh, executive session. Um, and uh, I would like to entertain a motion, or actually, yeah, I would like to entertain a motion for what we talked about. Anybody want to concisely say it? We want to move a motion to approve two percent for L to five percent for Dave, and we want to push this, the base salary to the forty six thousand for that. Uh, I second it. Do you want to second it? Uh, <laughs> you can second it. All it's it's it. It. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm so bad. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, any discussion? We had a discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, and we have one abstention from Noah. Are you going to also oh, thank you for whatever, supporting all those decisions? Yep. The uh, We are going to uh, further discuss after information with uh, accountant on best ways to approach and also um, size and things of that nature for the for, other. The, for the other things. Oh, oh we don't want this in the in the <laughs> other thing. The other. <laughs> uh, are you gonna are you gonna approve the budget tonight though? Yeah. Yes. So okay. that so oh, for that wasn't approved. So okay. that was an amendment. Yeah. Okay. The approval of budget was was. On the idea that there was kind of like money, yeah. Of, okay, there's enough space in the yeah, space. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, should I detail the amendment? Wait. So the amendment. That's should I say two percent? Oh, yes. Okay. Put put all. Yeah. Okay. Um, amendment. Sorry. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay. Um, okay, so after that, um, then we have a motion to approve the budget. Uh, yes. Uh, so motion to approve the uh, budget as amended uh, tonight and amended. presented. As presented. As yes. presented with the amendments that has just passed. Seconded. Right. But we don't, add, we don't change any numbers. No. Everything well, the, what, did that change the number though? No. Oh, okay. No, no. no, no, no okay. That, that be Strike. Strike. Strike it from the record. Uh, motion to approve the budget as presented tonight. Okay. Nola seconded. <laughs> okay. Nola seconded. All those in favor? Good. Uh, passes unanimously.
Um, right. Okay. Uh, I think that is <laughs> that is it. No, it's any, well, no way. No, uh, we can uh, we can get to the next point. So uh, next is a you have an annual meeting recap. Oh, uh, let's. Let's oh my that. god. Let's okay. do that the next time. Okay, we will we will okay. And the other one is accountability of us. Um, yeah, let's also do this the next time. Okay. Okay, so it was actually technically I think we have to uh did anyone come? How was the meeting? It was, was good. That? It was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. 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 All the Northamptons came. Bo That's came, who's like a teacher. Awesome. Uh, yeah, she's she's awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Um so we're tabling the, those other two items. I think What's that some sort of Robert's uh, rules we're supposed to do some sort of I, I um, okay. suspension yeah. of rules to table this stuff for last time, yeah. but whatever. Or you just moved it, moved it, push you to move it. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. So moving, uh, so motion to move the, the last two agenda items, which are talking about annual meeting and the procedurals to next meeting. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, okay. Um, Aye. Business? Okay. <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, motion for to adjourn? Uh, second. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, Norma. Uh, okay. See you tomorrow. Yes. Peace.